Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited to tell people about Jesus. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Larry Martin. He has been in ministry over almost 50 years. He's traveled to over 60 nations. He spent 25 years pastoring churches in Oklahoma, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee. And while he was still in his teens, he launched out as a traveling evangelist, and then he returned to evangelism in 1997, and he's continued that for the last 20-plus years. Uh, Dr. Larry Martin is a church historian with expertise in the origins of Pentecostalism, with a particular emphasis on the revival at Azusa Street. Dr. Martin, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Daniel. It's great to be with you. Well, let's start at the point where we met. It was in Ethiopia. I was there to do a great gospel crusade with my friend, Per Ockfist, and you are friends with Brother Per as well. And uh, we, we got to know one another. You remember that? Yes, sir. So very well. And, and so we uh, had a wonderful time that week. Thousands of people gave their, their lives to Jesus. And uh, you told me about your, your dream of doing large crusades, and you'd never done large crusades before. And, uh, and we had a, a conversation. Can you kind of tell me about that conversation and what came out of it? Oh, absolutely. Love to. Uh, first of all, it was such a pleasure, Daniel, to meet you and be part of that uh, great gospel festival that you hosted there. I had came to Ethiopia the previous year to work with Pear and teach at his Bible school, and he invited me to come back the next year. I came back and taught in the school for a week and was doing some uh, evangelism in local churches, and you guys were coming for the crusade, and Pear invited me to kind of tag along and carry the bags. As it ended up, you carried my bags up a several flight of stairs one day, and I, I still am grateful for that. But uh, we enjoyed the meeting, and uh, there was just something in my heart that I, I'd, I'd always uh, thought or dreamed of preaching in, in great meetings like that and uh, didn't know exactly how to get my foot in the door or, or what was the first step. And so after the meeting, we met in the cafe at the hotel where we were staying and, and uh, I asked you how you did it. And, and I said, do you have big sponsors? Do you have someone that's paying for this? And you said, well, every time we have a meeting, we just trust God and God provides. And that was such an amazing uh, faith statement to me. And I thought, well, if, if Daniel King can do that, I've been preaching all these years. I believe I could trust God to do that. And uh, you were such a blessing, inspiration to me, Daniel. And uh, the next year, we scheduled a crusade. At that time, it cost us $20,000. That was a huge amount of money for us to raise. But uh, God provided, and uh, we stepped out by faith, and the money came in. We did the crusade, and we've been doing crusades ever since. And I just want to say thank you to you for being so kind to us and hospitable and generous. And not only did you inspire me uh, to have faith to trust God for crusades, but at that table, you gave me uh, copies of every book that you had written, uh, the digital copies of how to raise money and how to do crusades. And I just appreciate your spirit, man. You're, you're a great young man and uh, your followers here need to know what a what a fine young man Daniel King is, and uh, what a great work you're doing for God. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm just so delighted with, with what God has been doing through your ministry in, in starting to, to do crusades. Uh, since that time, approximately how many crusades have you been able to do? You, you started out doing just one a year, and then you bumped it up and started doing more than one a year. So, so how many different crusades have you, you done so far? We've done, I think, eight crusades in Ethiopia and one in Brazil. We were scheduled to do three crusades in 2020, but uh, of course, with COVID, uh, we did, a, we actually were going to do four, three big crusades and one small one. We ended up, we got to do the Ethiopia crusade in January, and then in March, I went to uh, Myanmar for a smaller crusade there in a church, and uh, that's when COVID stopped everything and uh, kind of grounded us, so. We're looking forward to getting back out there this year. 
it will come and your crusades will be bigger and better than ever before, I believe. We're believing uh, God for that. The, the name of your ministry is uh, River of Revival Ministries. And so you have a, a great love for revival and, and revival preaching in churches all over the United States. And, and you've published a, a, a quite a few books about revival. You've published books by uh, Leonard Ravenhill, by Winky Prattney, and about the, the Azusa Street revival, about William Seymour. Talk to me a little bit about revival and why it's so important to have revival in the church. Well, uh, you know, if somebody's walking through the airport and they have a heart attack, their, their heart stops beating, the first thing uh, someone's going to do is look for a defibrillator that they can come and shock that person back to life. And I think that's kind of the one of the roles of revival is uh, I don't want to say the church is dead, but the church does go through seasons where they become lax and complacent, uh, where they become uh, spiritually ill. And a revivalist is uh, like that defibrillator that uh, shocks the church back to life and brings uh, new vitality and new, new faith. I, I think there's nothing more important in the life of a church in periodical seasons of revival when God sends refreshing from on high and, and recharges the church. We need a great nationwide revival in America today. Yeah, talk, talk to me a little bit about that because uh, as we record this, we just went through uh, an election and then the, the inauguration of our new president, Joe Biden. And uh, a lot of people are are concerned about where America is as a nation. Uh, what do you do you think God wants to do in our nation, in, in the church? Well, I think I know what God wants to do. God always wants to, to revive the church. He always wants the church to have a, a, a evangelism focus, reaching the lost and a discipleship focus, strengthening believers. Uh, uh, God's part is not hard to define. It's uh, getting us in, in step with God's program, getting us in step with what God wants is really the answer. God would love to send a great revival to America. And I pray that he will. And, uh, you know, by faith, I believe that revival is coming. But uh, there's two elements of revival. And, uh, and God's part is always wonderful and perfect. And he's always ready. But man's part sometimes is weak. And, and uh, Leonard Ravenhill often said the reason we didn't have revival is because we didn't want it bad enough. And I think when the church really gets a burden to see God move and really gets a burden to pray that we will see that visitation in America. I'm sure believe in God for that. Yeah, you mentioned Leonard Ravenhill and uh, I have several books which you've given me that uh, you've published uh, from Leonard Ravenhill. Um, how, how did you get permission to publish his books? At, at that point, Daniel, uh, the books were out of print and uh, the publishing company was not printing those books. And so I wrote them and asked permission to make them available through our ministry and they granted that to me. Uh, the, at this time, the, the publishers actually had given that permission back to Brother Ravenhill's family. And so uh, I'm not able to publish those anymore, but uh, I was very thankful for the opportunity to share those while they were out of print. Talk to me more about revival. Um, you, you've been a student of revival. You've experienced revival. You, you, you go to churches and, and, and re preach revival. What are some of the, the elements that, uh, that happen when revival comes? Sure. Uh, you know, people will ask the question, what's the secret to revival? And uh, I, I tell them God doesn't deal in secrets. He deals in revelations. It's just a matter of finding what God has said about it. And uh, when God does send revival, uh, some of the things that happens, of course, uh, there's uh, always a disruption. Uh, God disrupts evil. Uh, he disrupts complacency. He, he disrupts the sleepiness in the church. And uh, the devil always gets mad when you have revival. That's always... I always tell people that I believe that the initial physical evidence of baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is tongues, but the real evidence is trouble because when you 
get on fire for God, the devil's going to attack you. And a sign of revival is when when the enemy comes against the church. And another sign of revival is maybe the greatest sign of revival in the church is repentance. Uh, if there is no repentance, there will be no revival. If there's a little repentance, you might have a little revival. But when there's a when there is great repentance, there is great revival. I I wrote a little acrostic for revival, and uh, the the letters in revival R stands for repentance, and E stands for everyday repentance, and V stands for very repentant, and I stands for immediate repentance, and V the second V stands for very very repentant, and the the A is for always repentant, and the L is for lasting repentance, and that. That is uh, what happens when you have revival, the church repents. And then of course there's signs and wonders, miracles that take place when you have revival. People receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, the greatest of all is people are saved. There's no real revival until the lost are brought to Christ. I, I see a pattern there in, in, in your acrostic for revival. It, it seems yes. that repentance is an important part of revival. Uh, talk to me a little bit about repentance. Uh, uh, how does someone repent? How does revival bring repentance? I, I think in uh, in normal church life, we we get very careless. Uh, I, I use this example sometime, Daniel. I had a friend that was remodeling his bathroom. And uh, when he got ready to paint the wall that he'd been working on, he was going to paint it white because the rest of the bathroom was white. And when he painted the wall white. He found out the rest of the bathroom wasn't white. It was off white. And uh, so it didn't match, but he thought it was white all the time until he compared it to white. And when the Holy Spirit begins to move and the Holy Spirit begins to deal in people's heart, he begins to reveal things to them that they thought were okay. You know, well, I'm, I'm okay. You're okay. Everybody's okay. But you really get in the presence of God and you're like Isaiah was when he saw the Lord and said, man, I I'm unclean and I live in a land of unclean people. And uh, when we see ourselves as God sees us, that brings us to a place of repentance where we, we seek God to, to purify our hearts and make us more like him. You are also a Pentecostal historian. Uh, you've studied church history. And one of the things I really love about your ministry, you, you have a, a website called Pentecostalgold.com. And on that website, you have uh, sermons from some of the greatest Pentecostal preachers from the last 80 years. You've got R.W. Schombach, Amy Simple McPherson, David Wilkerson, T.L. Osborne, Jimmy Swagger, George O. Wood, and, and, and many others. Uh, tell me a little bit about Pentecostal Gold and, and how you started that the, the website. I, I just got a vision. I guess it's been seven, eight years ago now uh, that uh, it would be a wonderful thing. I'd, I, I'd collected these cassette tapes all my life. Throughout all my ministry, had boxes of them. And I thought, well, if we could just share these with people. And I uh, found a little recorder to digitalize those and started putting one or two up and uh, now I've got almost 2,400 sermons up. I, I put three sermons up this morning by Dr. Daniel T. Schaefer. Did you know Dr. Schaefer from Oklahoma City? I never heard of him. A great pastor. He pastored Crossroads Cathedral in Oklahoma City. A church seated about 5,000 people. And I put three of uh, Dr. Dan's sermons up there today. Yesterday, I put some sermons up by B.H. Clinton. And while I'm pretty well uh, stationed at home because of COVID, I've been spending a lot of time building this website. And uh, I just pray it's a blessing to the body of Christ. I, when, I'm, when I'm gone, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm 68 years old, when I'm gone, I want this website to continue to minister to the body of Christ for generations to come. And I think future generations need to hear the Pentecostal fire that came across in the, the Holy Roller generation. Uh, sometimes yes, we don't hear that type of preaching that much anymore, but uh, we still need that same fire of the Holy Spirit. What are some of your, your favorite preachers and your, your favorite sermons on the, the website? What, what's really ministered to you personally? Uh, every one of them. I know that's not a fair answer. Uh, my, my favorite sermon on the website is in, in 1969, 
My pastor took me to the General Council of Assemblies of God. I was just a teenager. And Jimmy Swagger preached that night. and It was the greatest sermon I ever heard. If you can imagine at a General Council of Assemblies of God, the power of God came down and people, one guy was running around the building shouting. It was quite amazing. And uh, that sermon was unavailable for many years. I'd, I'd bought a copy of it on an old reel-to-reel -reel tape. And uh, I, I couldn't uh, get access to that, but I contacted the Springfield, Missouri. They didn't have a copy of the sermon. Brother Swagger didn't have a copy of it, but I finally found that old tape that I had bought back in the 60s and uh, digitalized it. And it's called There is a Remedy. That's one of my favorites. Uh, the other, I guess my second favorite sermon on the website is one that David Wilkerson preached. It's called The Gospel of Accommodation. And if there was ever a prophetic word preached to the, to the Pentecostal movement, that is a tremendous word, the gospel of accommodation. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, Brother Shambach's messages and A.A. A. Allen, I just, uh, they're just wonderful. Your ministry has published a lot of historical documents from various revivals in the past. And so one of your books is called The, the Topeka Outpouring of, of 1901. And then you have a whole stack of books about the Azusa Street revival that happened in, in the early 1900s and spread Pentecostalism uh, around the world. You've got books uh, from your own experiences and, and also from the great Welsh revival. Um, if someone wants to get a hold of, of some of your books, what's the best way for them to order some books? All, all the books are available on Amazon, Daniel, but they're also available through our websites. Uh, I would suggest that uh, azusastreet.org, the bookstore there, has all the books available on it. Thank and, you for mentioning that. Yeah, and uh, if, a, if a pastor wants to invite you to come and uh, have a revival in his church, or if someone wants to support one of your crusades and help send you to the world, how can they, they find you? That but The best way for that is drlarrymartin.org. Uh, that's our, our ministry website. Uh, sometimes I get a note from a pastor and he'll say, what does it take uh, to bring you to our church? And I will answer an invitation. And uh, we, don't, we don't have any requirements. We just love to go preach the gospel. Well, that's a wonderful attitude to have. How many years have you been traveling and, and preaching the gospel uh, from the first time that i preached it's been 54 years that's amazing what what a tremendous uh, legacy uh you have um what you, you've been doing this a long time and uh, many of our our listeners are our preachers evangelists who are just getting started in ministry what advice would you give to a, a young minister who's just starting out about longevity in ministry? I, I think, uh, well, that's a, that's a tough question. I think the first thing is to be sure of your call. You know, the Lord spoke to me. I was at a youth camp and I never dreamed I was going to be a preacher. Never dreamed it. I, I thought maybe I would be an archaeologist. You know, I, I love history and, and uh, dinosaurs and all these things. And I sat in a youth camp and God, the, the, the speaker was Dr. George Brazel. You can hear him on Pentecostal Gold, but Dr. Brazel said, now all of you that are called to the ministry, I want you to come to the front. And immediately God just tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, that's you, I want you to preach the gospel. And I went up that night and surrendered to preach and, and that calling was so sure. You know, Daniel, in 50 plus years, I've been through some stuff and I'll, I'll tell you a lot of it was tough. I've had great blessings wonderful blessings but i've been through some tough stuff and that call is the thing that's kept me steady i I've, there's times that i'd like to have quit but there's never been a single time that i doubted that god called me to the ministry and uh, that's been the anchor for me is uh, to stay steadfast and of course you know the 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 everybody should know is the time you spend with the lord in prayer and in reading the word of god those are the things that carry you through the, the difficult times. Thank you so much, 
Uh, Dr. Larry Martin, it's wonderful to have you as a guest on, on the Evangelism Podcast. Love you, love your ministry and everything that you are doing for Jesus. Thank you. Uh, we love you, Daniel. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. God bless you. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.